time so far in this course, we have talked about how having a set of vectors or a set of columns of a matrix that are mutually orthonormal has certain advantages. The last example was in the launch, where when we formulated the problem nicely, the columns in the matrix that came up were mutually orthogonal, and we could have scaled those columns to make them orthonormal. So the classic problem is the one where you're given a set of n vectors, a0 through a n minus 1, and you would like from those to compute a set of mutually orthonormal vectors in such a way that the span of these vectors, remember the span of these vectors is the set of all vectors that you can create by taking linear combinations of them. We want the span of those vectors to be the same as the span of these, ve these vectors. What does that mean? Well, if a0 through a n minus 1 form a basis for that space, that subspace, the span that, uh, of those vectors, then these vectors form an orthonormal basis for that same subspace. All right. So, you know, there's a classic result in linear algebra known as Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization that gives us an algorithm for computing q0 through qn minus 1 from vectors a0 through an minus 1. And it goes as follows. Let's, let's have a look in two dimensions. If we're given a vector a0 and another vector a1, hmm. notice that the space spanned by these two vectors, if this is actually a two-dimensional subspace of a higher dimensional space, this space here would also be spanned by another vector in the same direction as a0, and the component of a1 that is orthogonal to a0. Okay. Now, how can we create a vector of length 1 in the direction of a0? Hmm, that's pretty easy. We can make that the vector q0, and q0 is just a0 divided by its length. And you end up with a vector of length 1. So, our process could be, in the first step, you set q0 equal to a0 divided by its 2 norm. But we like to actually do this slightly differently. We like to do this in two steps. We like to say, okay, first compute the length of a0, and then set q0 equal to a0 divided by its length. This is rho 0, 0, and the reason why we pick the Greek letter rho will become obvious in a little bit. Okay, so at that point, we have this vector here. Now, we can compute the component of A1 in the direction of Q0. That component can be computed as Q0 transpose, well, Hermitian transpose, times A1 times the vector q0. That's the formula because q0 has length 1. And then the component orthogonal to that can be computed as, um, let's see, a1 minus q0 Hermitian transpose a1 q0. Now, we're going to again compute this in two steps. We're first going to compute this as the value rho 0 1 and then we're going to to take the vector q0 multiplied by that 
and subtract it off of A1. And the result we're going to call A1 perpendicular. It's the component of A1 perpendicular to Q0 and therefore perpendicular to, Q, to A0. All right, so now we have that we compute rho 0, 1 as the dot product of Q1 with A1. And then we compute A1 perpendicular as A1 minus the component in the direction of Q0. This should be Q0. Get my drift? Now, if we had another vector, then what we would want to do is compute the component. Oh, we're not there yet. Wait a minute. That merely gives us a vector that's perpendicular. What we then want to do is say, oh, let's compute the length of that vector. And then let's create the vector q1 to be in that same direction, but of length 1. All right, now we're ready to move on. If there is another vector, okay, let's say it sticks up this way, what you want to do is you want to compute the component in the direction of q0. And then you want to compute the component in the direction of Q1. You want to subtract those off of this vector A2. That gives you the component of A2 that's perpendicular to both Q0 and Q1. And then you want to make that of length 1. And then you have your next vector. So, you compute the component of A2 in the direction of Q0. Well, this is the coefficient that you need for that. You do the same thing for Q1. You then want to create the part of vector A2 that is perpendicular to both Q0 and Q1. Then you want to compute the length of that vector. And then you want to compute your Q2 to be the vector in the same direction as A2 perpendicular, but of length 1. And then you move on to the next vector. Now what you notice is that I am talking through this, okay? I'm saying compute the length of A0. Why? Because you want to create a vector in the same direction but of length 1. Then you want to compute the component orthogonal to Q0 of A1. To do that you want to subtract off the component in the direction of Q0. To compute that, you need to figure out what this coefficient is. That's the dot product, and you move on. And every time I do a problem like this, in my head, I hear my say exactly what the steps are, because it's very that links what you're doing with the mathematics to conceptually what you're trying to accomplish. And this particular process is something that you probably saw either in a physics course or in a linear algebra course, and it's known as a Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization or Gram-Schmidt algorithm or something like that.